and welcome back to the hot lap. I thought we weren't going to do another video about Red Bull, but lo and behold, there is more Red Bull news. Yes, Red Bull are seemingly now imploding. I mean, what is going on? I think I said that several times in my last video. I mean, oh my gosh, Mohammed Ben Salem allegedly, according to BBC Sport, asking Max Verstappen to back corner. I mean, we'll get into that. We are, I mean, there they are. We've got Max to Mercedes rumours. Can you believe it? We've got Marco also addressing the tensions at Red Bull. It's full on crisis. I mean, I thought Alpine were in a crisis, but this is something else. I think Christian Horner now seemingly is in a fight for his career. Um, in relation to this, someone it, to it appears that someone's out to get to get this guy. And remember, he's been. One of the most successful team principals, starting in Red Bull in 2005, and it's still there. He is behind the team that built one of the most successful cars in Formula 1 ever last year. One of the most dominant spells last year. One of the, you know, all those records broken last year. He is the boss of all of that. He puts it all together. And yes... Goodness me. I mean, everything is seemingly done on 180. So Christian Horner, this is from the BBC. So, yeah, I mean, I take, we take all news, I guess, with a pinch of salt. But this one, slightly less. The least salt, I think, if the BBC, uh, BBC Sport at the very least, are reporting. And it says, Christian Horner, Verstappen says the team, um, the controversy is driving the team apart. We spoke about this earlier today, but there's something more significant about this. Um, as you can see, the FIA asking, well, Ben Salim asking Max, to support Horner, but we'll get into that. So the controversy around the team principal Horner driving uh, is driving people apart, says the father of um, Max Verstappen. And now, as we know, this anonymous email, lots of messages purporting to it allegedly involve Horner. That has not been established as fact, as in that has not been established as that was this evidence in this case. Horner has refused to say, though, if the leaked messages are genuine, to be fair. I imagine from his lies, he may have been told not to comment on it. So even if they, you know, so he, even if they are fake, he probably can't say from his lawyers. They've, I'm, I'm only guessing at this point. But anyway, it cannot continue this way, said Jos. The situation is not good for the team and is driving people apart. Verstappen denied, though, that he was the source of the leaks, which we got into. And he told, obviously, and the Dutch paper of that, that he wasn't. Uh, Verstappen told BBC Sport uh, that he made comments to the two newspapers after what was a falling out with Horner in Bahrain. And he added that Mac Verstappen had seen the comments and didn't say anything. And a Red Bull spokesman had said, there are no issues here. The team are united and we are focused on racing. So there are no issues here from Red Bull. The team are united, apparently. And we are focused on racing. Yes, I guess they are, because you can make an argument. Jos Verstappen is not part of the Red Bull team. He's Max's dad. So, on Sunday, the Telegraph reported that Max Verstappen had been asked, and this is this is the this is the exclamation point I wanted to talk about. Verstappen had been asked by Mohammed Ben Salim, the president of F1's governing body, to back Horner publicly. And BBC Sport here has independently verified the story. Ben Salim's approach came after Max Verstappen gave only qualified support to Horner when asked four times in the lead up to the Bahrain Grand Prix on Saturday whether he had full faith and confidence in him and the FIA have been approached for comment. And over the Bahrain event, the FIA repeatedly said it was in conversations over F1 management on the topic of these Horner allegations. Vios Verstappen's intervention is it says they're potentially significant because Max wields major influence within Red Bull as a result of being one of their most successful drivers and continuing to be looking like in 2024 to be one of their most successful drivers. Now, it also reflects internal tensions known to exist within Red Bull. Horner and Motorsport advisor Helmut Marko and between, um, between the time majority owners and executives at the headquarters in Austria. Big tensions. Last year, the Verstappens backed Austrian Marco after he had a falling out with Horner, allegedly. And the company ownership is split. So we've got 51% owned by the Thai family and 49% owned by Red Bull in Austria. Now, under Mark Mascherschmidt, the son of co-founder Dietrich, who died, sadly, obviously, in October 2022. Verstappen started his campaign for a fourth consecutive tie, uh, title for a dominant win at uh, this week, well, Saturday's, this weekend's Bahrain Grand Prix. But, sadly, as we said, the Horner controversy 
has been dominating the news lines. A day after Red Bull announced the grievance about him dismissed, that's when all those alleged WhatsApp messages were leaked. Horner has denied these claims and he's obviously continued to go no comment. But the fact that the FIA are asking Mr. Verstappen, Max Verstappen, to see if he's going to back Horner, and that's been independently, um, you know, Verstappen told, he added back Verstappen seeing the comments that Red Bull spoke, there were no issues here. Independently verified the story. I mean, that's that's a massive exclamation mark. They, I doubt the BBC would print it unless they were t- entirely confident. They're not like a, you know, it's not like a clickbaity thing. They don't, BBC Sport do not really do that. So, and there's even been, I mean, as we've, as we've suggested, there's even been talks of Max Verstappen going to Mercedes, believe it or not. This is from motorsport.com. And if we wind up all the way here, could Red Bull War, Civil War, really trigger shock Verstappen F1 to Mercedes? Could Max go to Mercedes? And it says, despite it being the only story in Formula One now, very few people know what's going on behind the scenes. No, no one really knows a thing. Red Bull, understandably, and is their right, keeping really quiet. But one thing is for sure, it says here, the saga is far from over and the ultimate end game is not quite clear. So ever since this controversy blew up, there have been speculation far beyond, for being far beyond an internal matter. And it's the important thing here. It is speculation. We don't know all the facts, do we? But we just get tiny, tiny tidbits. So as the saga about it, word spread that this has morphed into something far wider and now a battle for control and influence between the Austrian side of the Red Bull company and its Thai majority owner. Allegedly, somewhere in the middle of all this, it says Red Bull Motorsport advisor, Helmut Marker and the, Verst- um, and the Verstappen camp of Max and Jos each had their own opinions about what they felt should happen. Plus, it said we had to throw into the mix the influence of Red Bull's major corporate partners. We've got Ford and Oracle, although it's hard to work out which side of the fence they're sitting on. The article says on one hand. Some have claimed the boardroom angst amongst the companies potentially getting tarnished by the tie to this mess at Red Bull. However, others have suggested that their biggest concern was actually potentially losing Horner, as we said near the beginning, whose influence and appeal to the wider world were factors in driving them to get involved in the first place. And it it has hit a takedown campaign. So for a few short hours after Wednesday's announcement by Red Bull, Horner had been cleared by the independent investigation. It seemed things would settle down and would get back to action on the track. But then we had, um, yeah, it was all blown out of the water, wasn't it? Halfway through the second practice when those anonymous emails happened and were sent to senior personnel, journalists, Ben Salayim, um, Stefano Domenicali, team principals, and the email was allegedly these WhatsApp messages. And although the um, dossier, as we keep on saying, has not been confirmed, there have been rumours that a second document releases on its way. We haven't seen that. Hopefully it's not, but we need, just need this to end. But the real question, though, is who and why? And it goes, those involved have to close ties to the rebel organisation and team, either professionally or personally, to have had access so, so though this person would have had to have access to this evidence that's understood was handed to in, the investigators for analysis for the internal investigation. A lot of padded gossip has surrounded Jos Verstappen, who is not always known to see eye to eye to Christian Horner over various things um, since Max has joined the Red Bull organisation. And his dramatic comments on Saturday made it to the Daily Mail and other news sources leave us in no doubt where what he really feels about Christian Horner. Um and he, once again, he said there's tension there, uh, the, the, the team's in danger of falling apart. But there's a world of a difference between wanting something to happen and being a perpetrator to make it happen, to be fair. Once again, innocent to proving guilty. And Verstappen has been at pains to rubbish the idea that he's been behind this campaign, saying that wouldn't make sense. Now, here we go. Opportunity calls, it says. Now, whether he is a passenger or driver in all that is happening cannot be confirmed however the events of putting Verstappen senior in a position to capitalize on a potentially being a change at the top of Red Bull and amid the crisis within the world championship squad it has also opened up in the piranha club that is F1 it says opportunities for others too and it says here perhaps one of the more interesting theories being banded about is what is going on at Red Bull involves a real big picture play surrounding senior staff contracts and Red Bull's own long-term future in F1, big exclamation mark. 
It's widely accepted that Horner's presence in Red Bull has been a critical element in giving many senior staff at the team a sense of security, understandably. And indeed, it is understood that a number of top personnel, including Chief Technology Officer Adrian Newey, have clauses in their contract that allow them to leave if Horner is gone. Once again, we don't have that confirmed, just a rumour. Uh, that's not a confirmation, but that's really interesting. I mean, if Horner leaves, does Newey leave? At that point, does Newey then go to Ferrari? And it would not be a, it would not be a surprise that such a clause exists, it says, um, in Verstappen's deal too, which locks him down to the team until 2028. So if somehow there was d a desire for individuals to get out of the current deal, either to re renegotiate terms or go elsewhere, a Horner exit door, uh, a Horner exit could open that door, they're suggesting. Now, from Verstappen's perspective, perspective it says being a free agent could allow him to agree on a fresh contract or more favorable terms be it for more money um bigger you know he is a much bigger superstar it suggests than when he first uh, signed up better marketing rights or flexibility or could even be the prospect of move elsewhere to forge a new career path after all your Verstappen's comments make it it says it almost untenable that his son and horner can continue without something changing Absolutely, I think it does now. I mean, do Red Bull now turn around and go, Jos Verstappen, you're not allowed in the pits. You are a distraction. But Jos Verstappen is Max Verstappen's dad. I mean, it's like, almost like an extreme version of the Sunday dad of football shouting at the coach. Um... And in, uh, yeah, and that's exactly what one of the one of the people on the comments said below as well, which uh, I'm saying from which may, may, may be chuckle because it does feel that that way a bit. But obviously, this is a lot more serious um, than uh, you know than the Saturday Sunday football morning. But in the background, it says there could be certainly grounds to think that the grass may be greener elsewhere in the long term. But what if as as F1 heads to the new engine rules, it says rumors are true that point to a change in competitive order, potentially Red Bull power unit not delivering the kind of performance uh, figures that other manufacturers are set out to reach. That could leave Verstappen helpless to avoid knowing that the current run of success he's enjoying could come to an abrupt end, unless, of course, Horner is gone and he can jump ship. But should Verstappen become a free agent, then there will be no shortage of rival teams interested in him, and the rumour mill has already pointed him in the direction of Mercedes. Yes, the German manufacturer has been interested in Verstappen, as we know, since he was a junior, but he lost out to Red Bull because Red Bull have got two teams. They could offer him a drive. Mercedes couldn't. They had Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton. Now, seeing the Dutchman slip from Mercedes' grass has long played on Toto Wolff's mind. It is influencing his desire to not let and, um, you know, Kimi Antonelli go, the, the junior. So as Wolf said recently about Red Bull grabbing Verstappen, we lost the young driver and you can see how successful he has become. He said, with Mercedes having a cockpit available for 2025, it appears being it could be too early for Antonelli. Mercedes could clearly jump at that chance of Verstappen. And as we know, he, he would be a very good replacement for Lewis Hamilton with the speed and global popularity that would act as a tremendous boost. Furthermore, Mercedes could snatch one of Red Bull's biggest assets and it would make itself stronger and its rival weaker. So they're saying double whammy. And it's probably no coincidence in the paddock. Shortly after Red Bull had unleashed this dominant force in Bahrain, um, Jos Verstappen was spotted deep in conversation with Toto Wolff. And it's understood not to have been the first chat they've had over the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend. There were rumours of a dinner meeting on Friday night too, even if Wolf insists he is not hatching a plot to lure Verstappen on board. But wanting a fast car, it goes for now. The Horner situation is an unknown variable, whether or not he remains in place. It's going to be hard to predict, especially if the campaign to discredit him gets more aggressive in forthcoming ways. I hope it doesn't. I hope it ends. And no matter how defiant Horner is about staying in place, Staying in place, his fate will almost certainly be decided in the boardrooms of Red Bull and its corporate sponsors who will be paying a watching brief over all that's happening, the article says. Wolf 2 is observing from the sidelines and will not be blind to possibility that circumstances could play in his hand. But equally, he knows he has to get his house in order before Verstappen would like to go to Mercedes and the desire to be there would be would not be so great if their car's not very good. And Wolf himself was asked on Saturday night in Bahrain if there was a chance Verstappen could drive a Mercedes, and he gave a carefully considered response. He said, I think the driver will always choose the quickest car. That is fundamentally what it's all about. At the moment, the Red Bull is the quickest car, so that will obviously be the priority. Reading to that, answer what you will, but they said, but it was not a 
No. Yes. I mean, oh dear. Um, this that's this is the allegedly panic video footage of uh, that's Christian Horner there, and I think that's uh, yeah Christian Horner and uh, Verstappen. They're they're literally just talking that. I mean, there's not there really isn't much else, much else you can really talk about. And um, Helmut Marco have come out has come out to um, clear the issues. Let's say in relation <laughs> in, in in relation to it all. Um, here we go. Helmut Marco addresses Red Bull collapse. Um, as Christian Haller turmoil continues. So, Helmut Marko is convinced that Red Bull's strength and cohesion is going to remain intact as the team finds its way through the Christian Horner saga. This is from PlanetF1.com. Red Bull dominantly won the Bahrain Grand Prix. Absolutely. Made it quite the boring race, really, didn't they? Not their fault. But he said, Marco's come out said, our strength and cohesion will remain intact. Although the Britain was cleared by Red Bull, that's Horner, parent company, after the investigation, it's all gone absolutely a 180 um and rival team bosses have also weighed in and it's damaging to obviously red bull and it's been damaging to formula one as well it isn't pleasant but we concentrated on the sport and thank god that worked out perfectly marco said he said we saw today how the team showed an incredible performance the strategy the pit stops everything worked we assume that our strength and cohesion will remain intact so there we go um, if you want more, like and subscribe. I mean, yeah, I imagine it wouldn't surprise me if we're doing a video this time tomorrow as well about the future of Red Bull and their and, their, and certain staff members, let's say. But this is not, this is clearly not going anywhere. Thank you very much and speak to you soon.